the, the ministry that I was brought, that the, that the general wow. deliverance came out of. Wow. And it was a Shockley family, strong ministry, mm -hmm. that from family here in Milton, Delaware, wow. is what it came from. That's awesome. Uh, he, he picked me up as a driver at the airport, though. He, uh, he was one of the elders that picked me up. Mm. And got to talking and never realized that he was the Shockley family. Wow. Possible <laughs> for me being here. the legacy of his blood. That's why I'm saying yeah. sitting here today. God be the glory. Amen. That yeah. is beautiful. Wow. That that that's powerful. Yeah, yes, it is. Yes, it is. Hallelujah. Okay, let me see what it is. Testing. One, two, three. Say something for me, guys. Hey, Apostle. God blessings. Uh -huh. Okay, I don't know what we done did here. Try it again. Hey, Glory Apostle. to God. All right. I don't know what he's got. All I know is we got it good on this end going. That's all that matters. Yep, I can hear you perfectly. Yeah, we can. I can hear both of you. Mm -hmm. What it is, we got a task cam, and it's supposed to pick up talking about us. Are you ready? Amen. <laughs> oh, boy, hallelujah. Listen, he already stared up some things. Yeah, he man, knows hallelujah. It would have caught the spark. Now, nah, but we're glad that you're here. Um, welcome to DMP, Discipleship and Prayer with Michelle. I know this is some of you guys' first time here. Um, Discipleship and Prayer with Michelle is a discipleship and prayer ministry. It's also an apostolic and prophetic ministry. So we equip believers to be disciples. I really believe in not only making disciples, but making disciples that's disciplers. Um, so just a little bit about uh, myself briefly, then I'm going to go and it's going to be all his. Um, so a little bit about myself. I know some of you that's joining have asked, um, how can you enroll into DMP? This is a program that opens up yearly. Um, so 2024 is closed now, but the wait list is open for 2025. So if you follow me on social media um, or Facebook, you can definitely um, sign up for our wait list for 2025. And then we start in January of every year, um, but it's a closed um, program. Um, so a little bit about myself briefly. Um, I was a backslider <laughs> for 10 long years and on, I came back to the Lord in January of 2020. But when mm. I came back to the Lord, I cried out to him and he gave me two options. He said, you go either lose your mind or you're going to die. So I chose Christ and I came back to him and immediately um, he took me into praying at midnight. I didn't know about no deliverance. I didn't know about no warfare. I did not know about none of that. I just knew that I was fighting for my life. And during that time, I had a, a, a friend of mine that was a prophet, and he told me about Apostle Ivy Hopkins. Okay. And I was scared of deliverance. Do you hear me? I was like scared until I heard Apostle Ivory Hopkins and teach teach deliverance. It was so balanced. It was so practical. It was not spooky. It was like, I can apply this to my real life. And I began to listen to a message that he had taught. It was an older message. It wasn't on current at that time. And while I was sitting there listening to that teaching, I was sitting there bawling, crying, like getting deliverance right in my living room. And I knew I had to set up an appointment with him to really um, get counsel and guidance. And then through him, I, it's just such a blessing. I just want to share this because this is truly um, a man of God by the spirit. Because it wasn't like a new apostle or nothing like that. But through him, I connected with the school called Rafa Deliverance University, which he is a chancellor of that school. And I said, I just asked a simple question during our session. I said, Apostle, I heard you a part of a school or something. I need all that I can get with this deliverance. And I joined Rafa Deliverance back in 2021, and it has been a blessing. It really is. It's a scripture in the Bible that says, your teachers, your eyes will see your teachers. They will no longer be hidden in a corner. And God has truly brought my teachers around me. And it came through Apostle um, Ivory Hopkins. So I'm just honored to really have him here with us today. He has so much wisdom. I just want to share some of his bio because it's important that you know um, about him. Apostle Ivory Hopkins, he is a general of deliverance 
And he says, and I know you hear him say this, he has one clear cut agenda to teach balanced deliverance across the nations. At Luke 4, 18, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he have anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He have sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. So Apostle Ivory Hopkins is the founder and overseer of Pilgrim's Ministry of Deliverance Incorporated, which is located in Georgetown, Delaware. He and his wife, Elder Evelyn, founded the ministry in 1983. He has spent time. He doesn't travel much more now, but he has spent time traveling extensively throughout the United States, foreign countries, and ministering in his own special, unique way that resulted in thousands of changed lives. He flows powerfully in the ministry of deliverance, the prophetic, and in church structure. In 1980, he okay. was presbyter over five states and Pentecostal Church of God. Apostle Hopkins holds a master's of Christian ministry degree from Chesapeake Bible College and Seminary in Queenstown, Maryland. He has authored several, several books, and you need to get them, several books on deliverance and various other Christian topics. He is also chancellor of RDU, um, which is Rafa Deliverance University. And he is married to Elder Evelyn Hopkins, whom we love, and has been blessed with two children, Ivory and, and Jacqueline. And his passion and calling is always in deliverance ministry. So let's just give a Bible, uh, uh, um, a Zoom clap <laughs> for Apostle Ivory Hopkins. Um, just some housekeeping, please um, keep your phones, your Zooms muted. Um, and I will take um, questions around um, at 6.30, 6.45-ish in CST time. So write down your questions and hold them um, to the end. And he's going to be teaching today on um, the importance of character and integrity for emerging prophets and deliverance ministers. As a discipler of this group, I really want y'all to, to really grasp that because that's more important than even the gifts, your character and integrity. So introducing Apostle Hopkins is for you. Praise the Lord. First of all, I want to thank Prophetess Michelle for being allowing us to be on with you. It is my pleasure to be here. And look, guys, I'm just going to talk like just good old brother Ivory, and we're just going to have a simple talk. One of the uh, One of the strongest things that I learned as I was growing in the Lord, was that I had to deal with my own strongholds. The, the gift things that are in our lives are inevitable. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit will distribute those gifts severally as he will. But the danger zone that you have to watch out for, now, now listen to me, we are not talking about false prophets right now. Because we that are here today, the last thing we got on our mind is being false prophets. That's the last thing on our mind. What we're talking about is the personal inventory of our lives that makes a difference. I was trained in deliverance by a man by the name of Wynn Worley. And I, how, when I say I was trained, I sat in every service I could get to where this man was teaching. I sat there in that service. I was a kid in the 14th or 15th row, but my was home. But something when Worley said that I have seen these modern days show up, and I've been in the ministry now over 50 years, been in deliverance ministry about 45 of that. But let me tell you what he talked about. When Worley talked about a minister that can become a walking time bomb. Now, what a walking time bomb is, in, in his description, was that you are a person that you start out, you love the Lord. You realize that you have a calling or an anointing on your life. And you are excited about it. You're beginning to grow momentum. People are beginning to recognize the grace, meaning the gift that's in your life. But lurking somewhere within us still is the strongholds of that carnal nature that must be crucified, cast down, or cast out. And I'm going to say that one more time. Each one of us have errors in our life that must be crucified, 
cast down or cast out. When demons are not able to stop you from serving the Lord, they will try to join you, bury themselves in you, and wait for the right opportune time to manifest and not only pull you down, but others. A walking time bomb, when world was saying, was like a ministry that becomes well known. Now I want y'all to get with me. There's a lot of ha- that's a lot happening in the season where we're in right now. A true man or woman of God. I'm talking about a true man or woman of God can build a ministry and it starts to get momentum. God starts to really use you. But the one missing link in your life is you're not dealing with things in your own personal character. Are you hearing me? When will it was talking about at this place where you're well known and everybody wants to hear you and you're getting engagement after engagement. You're busy for Jesus. Prophesying to everybody. But you have not dealt with your attitude, your personality, your lust, your character. That bad boy can explode to such a degree until it can damage you and pull down everything that's connected to you. One of the worst dangers that could happen to any of our lives is that God bring us to a place where we're actually walking in prophetic fulfillment and our lives, the things in our character, the strongholds in your life you're not dealing with, pull you down. So what I'm talking about tonight, when I talk about the importance of one's character and integrity as emerging prophets and deliverance ministries, I'm talking about what do you know about you that needs to be delivered crucified, or brought in subjection. And let me help y'all with this. You will not need all nine gifts of the Spirit to figure this out. Got that? You will not. I I do this. I'm going to bring up some notes so we can rapidly hit, and then we can take on some questions. But I want you to hold this in your mind. What do you know about you that you're struggling with? What is it? Not not, not how everybody say you're prophesying, Not like everybody say you really can teach or whatever. What is it about you that you know that needs to be dealt with? What is that thing that you know about yourself? Now watch this. I'm going to take you in to some scriptures. Amen. Thank God for share screen. I love share screen. Now, in the beginning, Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7 and 8 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom. And instruction. And this word here, fear, meant to reverence God. In other words, amen, the first thing that we have to have is a reverence of God. In Proverbs 1 and 8, it says, My son, hear the instruction of the father and forsake not the law of the mother. Often we seek God with all our heart in the beginning of our salvation and relationship with him. That's the place where you find consecration, right there. That's the place right there. Where Remember how it was in the beginning? My God, you, your soul thirsted after God, like you was in a dry and thirsty name. But listen, but as time goes by and God blesses us, we forget the passion of our pursuit that we had in the beginning. People, I say to you as people of God, fight to hold on to the childlike person that you had in the beginning. Most of you, because you are ministers, I can just pop scriptures off on y'all because you're already cold. The disciples in Luke chapter 10, they went off and they said, Lord, devils are subject to us in your name. I mean, they were blown away. The gifts were moving. They were discerning the spirit. They were prophetically speaking. They were operating in miracles, gifts of healings, creating miracles. And they said, even the devils are subject to us in thy name. And Jesus turns around and says, rejoice not that devils are subject to you, but that your names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Listen to me, body of Christ. Listen to me, soldiers. The stuff that's in 
your personal life that you know you need deliverance or healing from or you need to work on it or you need to crucify it. If you don't deal with it, it will deal with you eventually. It doesn't go away. It does not go away. I find two major mistakes he made, Solomon made, his lust for women and his league with the ungodly nation. Those were the two things. Now, how could a man as wise as Solomon not see this one coming? But the, what are your two things? What are the things that you know that can get in the way and contaminate the calling in your life? Look at this power verse. I call it a power verse. Second Corinthians 6 and 17 and 18. Second Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17 and 18. Wherefore, come out from among them and be you separate, saith the Lord. Touch not the unclean things and I will receive you. Next verse, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Everyone called of God has a call of consecration that connects them to God. And that keeps in place where they can hear from God. Let me go down on this one here. Let me knock this down so I can get it together and slow it up. Every one of us, now this place of consecration is that place where the God, where the Lord says to you, come out from among them. He's called us all from something. Have y'all ever had a time in your life where in after you've given your life to the Lord, other people, even other Christians, are doing things that you turn around and look at them and go, I'm sorry, I can't do what you're doing. Listen, I'll give you all a perfect example. Because I was a former drug addict, Drugs took me out. Are you hearing me? When I went to Europe for, to with my to see my grandchildren, my grandchildren are all German, okay? And when I went to Europe with them and I went to dinner with their grandfathers, I remember sitting at a table and everyone was eating and food was going well. And they brought up wine and everybody had a wine, including some of the younger kids. And when they got to me, I looked at them and said, thank you, but I uh, thank you, but no thank you. And when they looked at me, they were like, what is that an American thing? And my, my one of my granddaughters said to me, they called me Opie, that's grandfather in German, Opie, Opie, how come you didn't have a glass of wine? I said, Tasha, Opie cannot just have a glass of wine. Opie, it will cause me to get into a place where I will become addicted again. Now, I know somebody might say, Apostle Hopkins, you got the anointing now. Praise God. A little bit of wine for the stomach's sake, it won't harm you. I don't even play in that realm. Now, you might do. This is not me trying to create a doctrine on what you can't have. But this is me letting you know, I know what will mess up my consecration. Because the spirits so strongholds and the bondage in my family line generational is alcoholism that leads to addiction that leads to less than perversion. Now, do you know yours? If you know yours, don't play with that thing. Everyone called by God has a call of consecration that connects them to God and that keeps in and, and that keeps in place where they can hear from God. Now, this word consecration refers to a person or things being separated or belonging to God. Listen, don't let yourself get so busy doing anything. Do you know even ministry can become a, a, a roadblock to your intimacy with God? Let nothing get in the way of your consecration. They are, they are holy or sacred. They are set apart for God's service. Their Hebrew word for consecrating is kedosh. And it is translated in, in English as holy, consecrated, hallowed, sanctified, dedicated, or dedicated. So there is that consecrated place that we have to fight to stay in. Your integrity, your calling, and the anointing in your life 
is connected to that place. It is not connected to what people think about you on your billboard and flyer. It is not connected to whether a big name organization wants you to come in and minister. Let me help you. Your consecration is greater than your gift. Your gift is riding and purified by your consecration because your gift deals with administration to enough. Your consecration deals with the shaping of your fruit in life. The enemy of our soul fears only one thing in a believer's life. That is our complete surrender to God. The devil is completely surrender. Look what it says in Romans 6 and 16. Know you not that to whom you yield yourself service to obey, his service ye are to whom he obey. Whether sin unto death or obedience unto righteousness. In the spirit, the battle is won or lost or related to whom you yield your life to. I'm going to say it again. In the spirit, the battles are won or lost or related to whom you yield your life to. Consecrating your life to, is concerned with who you are surrendering to in obedience. Listen, in my state of mind, in my walk in God, I don't care what law the world's change, the world changes. I don't care what people are doing in churches. Are you hearing me? No church or preacher in a pulpit causes me to go home. My own personal relationship with God and staying in the righteous place is the what keeps me intact with God. How about yourself? How many of you right now, you love the body of Christ? You enjoy the anointing in many teachers' lives. Guess what? I'm not doing anything and everything that they want me to do. Can I say something to y'all? Can we talk? Let me, let me, let me talk about some real y'all. In my counseling, many times, I have had, I'm, I'm going to use this example, and y'all don't mind it now. I've had, remember, talking to a sister that had a prophetic calling on her life. And she tells me that this prophet she got hooked up with talked to her. And after a while, before you know it, she's flying over to where that prophet is and that prophet sleeps with her. How did that happen? Glad you asked. It happened because she failed to keep her consecration. She failed to stay in that place. Listen. If you said, I don't care who it is. If you get in a relationship with anybody that you're thinking that God gave them to you for to be special in your life, if you lose your consecration, they are not the one. If you lose your dedication to God, they are not the one. If you have to hide or back away from the truth of who God called you to be, they are not the one. By the time we went through deliverance with this uh, woman of God, she had formed a soul tie where she was so bound to him that she could hardly let him go. And when she came back away from him, locked him on the cell phone, locked him in, in the emails, she started getting demonic visitations from lust spirits that was connected to the intercourse that him and her had. Are y'all hearing me? So I'm saying to you, this would have never happened to her if she had not allowed him to get in that place of consecration, in that place of intimacy. God always speaks to his servants about what to do to embrace him intimately. Did y'all see that? This is off the hook. God always speaks to his servants about what to do to embrace him intimately, dwell in his presence, and carry his anointing. My God, are you hearing me? Let me go on a little further. Here go some examples of broken consecrations. Now, I'm moving fast like this so we can take some questions. Our fathers and mother of us all, Adam and Eve, when their consecration and intimacy were broken, they felt naked before God. Because he was their cover. And, and he had, listen to this. Look, I'm going to read this again, but I want to highlight this maybe. 
when our when their consecration and intimacy was broken, they felt naked before God because he was their covering. They created their own covering, but it was not sufficient. They got away from their consecration. Adam and Eve's consecrated place was where they met God in the garden. How many of y'all know that prayer place? You know that place, amen, we're in. Somebody might call it my prayer closet. Somebody might call it their altar. But you got that place. Now listen to this. Prophetess Michelle, I, I start work many times at 4 a.m. in the morning, right? I get up mornings and I have time alone. Not even Evelyn is a part of this. I have time alone with the Lord before I talk to anybody in any country. I talk to the Lord, and it is so amazing. Me and Abba, and the Most High, begins to converse with each other. Sometimes, Sister Veronica, Sister Veronica, sometimes I just shut up and listen. I had, a, can I share a good one with y'all? Y'all love this. I was, I, me and Abba had been working the day before, and it was something I impatiently wanted, and Evelyn got to it. But I was feeling really patient, like, she needs to kind of move a little faster when I, I needed that for the wife. You got me? Now, I don't abuse my wife, so follow me, right? Follow me. So I get up this morning, and I'm meditating. Now, that morning, I'm the next morning, rather, I'm meditating with my time with God. And the Holy Spirit said, you remember yesterday when you became impatient with Evelyn? And I was like, oh, yeah, Holy Spirit, yeah. He said, you the one with the problem. I said, what? He said, you're the one with the problem. I, and I said, well, how? Now, I never said a word to Evelyn. She didn't even know that I was frustrated how fast it didn't get to me. She didn't even know it because I never said anything. She said, you're the one with the problem. She said, the way that she handled that was her personality. She said, but yours, you wanted to make her the way you wanted her to be. Now, listen at this, y'all. Sister Naomi, listen at this. I come back to the office and I'm talking to Evelyn. I said, Ab, I said, uh, thank you for getting that, getting that paperwork together for me. She said, yeah, baby. She said, by the way, what took me so long? Now, now the sister Naomi, I never told her what God was telling me. How many know in that intimate place, God can talk to you when you're ignorant. He can stop you from being so ignorant. Have you ever had God minister to your ignorance? Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Well, listen to this. I didn't tell Evelyn anything, Providence. Evelyn says, uh, she said, you know that paperwork that you wanted the other day? Uh, I, I said, yeah. She said, I gave, I said, yeah, you gave it to me later on. She said, yeah, I'm sitting there and on the inside going like, uh oh, let's see what's going to happen. What's going on here? She said, when you asked me to do that, I was organizing and setting up a number of meetings that needed to be set in order. She said, you know how I am very detailed with my office. And, and, and now me now, and if it had been most companies, I would have manned up on her. Now, first of all, praise God, you do know you're working in the office. And, and now I can general anyway. See, I'm the boss. I'm the general. And I tell you to do something just because you're my wife. That don't mean you got to move so. See what I'm saying? But in my intimate time, God was able to speak to the fool so that Evelyn can remain having the king. Oh, y'all didn't hear that. In other words, the Holy Spirit in your intimate time can speak to the foolishness in, in you. Because all of us got foolishness in us. But it's that time of consecration and intimacy. God is able to speak. Listen at this. In the beginning, they ran towards God's voice of God. But once consecration was broken, they ran from his voice. So one way to tell that your intimacy, your consecration is in trouble. Are you running towards that voice that you used to meet in a certain place? Or are you busy now? Are you heading another direction? Are you frustrated? Are you hearing me? Did y'all know that Jonah still had an anointing to win a whole city that he hated? Did you get that? God got Jonah to the place till he dealt with his issues. Let me go on a little bit faster here. And they heard the voice of the Lord. So Genesis 3 and 8. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of God. Oh my Lord Jesus. They hid themselves 
from the presence of the Lord in the same garden that they used to meet him in. Are you following me? Listen, look for in anything you're doing, brother, you are now backing away from the time of intimacy with God. If you see that in your life, soldier, you're in trouble. You're in trouble. Yes, you'll still prophesy. Let me tell you something. People will fill a prayer line if they get their needs met. That does not mean that you're okay. Because guess what ministry is? Ministry is all withdrawal. All withdrawal. Intimacy and consecration is all deposit. Hmm? Did anybody? Oh, I'm going to say it one the most so high. One more time for the soldiers. At this September, once again, ministry is all with trouble. People stand in the line and hold you till you're about ready to try to minister to them. Get them, get them, get them. Y'all, you hear me? But your intimacy is where you get a deposit. Where you get a deposit. And, and I'm going to say something to you. No matter what mentor you're connected with, that mentor will never replace the intimacy that you're supposed to have from God. Or else you're going to end up in idol worship. Or else you're going to end up like the carnal Corinthian church. I'm a Paul. I'm a Cephas. I, I, I'm a Paulus. Now, did you hear what they said? I am a Paul and I am a Cephas and I am a Apollos. And the Apostle Paul said to them, where's all of these? One soul, the other planet. God give the increase, but it was all about God. Listen, when the Lord, Prophetess Michelle, when the Lord got a hold of you, it, listen, you ain't know no Hopkins. You ain't know none of them. He got you in the cool of your day. He brought you to a place of consecration. And yes, by his grace, he connected you with other believers of like faith or others that you could glean from. But even with that, don't put more, don't put any more stake in man than what man is. Let me drop this to you. Look at me real good. Open all these spiritual ears, what I'm getting ready to say. Samuel was one of the greatest prophets of Israel. He was one of among the greatest. But Eli, the one who taught Samuel how to hear from God had issues. Samuel actually was raised up in an imperfect ministry. Eli's sons were whoremongers. Their father never corrected them. But, and, and Samuel looked at this growing up. Samuel watched this drop, but his intimacy with God kept had him to survive right in the midst of drama. You don't have to pick up the spirit of a place where you're at. You can keep the spirit of God in you that brought you there. Is anybody getting this? That's some heavy stuff I'm saying. Oh, Lord, I thank you. Now, here goes here goes Samson. He was a cold but a walking dime bomb. Samson, when his consecration was broken, his strength was lost, his eyes were gouged out, and he was forced to grind at the mill like an animal by his enemy. In the book of Judges, chapter 13, verse 7, he said unto me, Behold, thou shalt conceive. And this is what God is saying to his, his mother. He said unto me, Behold, thou shalt conceive and bear a son. And now, and, and now drink no wine, nor strong drink, neither eat any unclean thing. For the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb to the day of his death. He shall be a Nazarite to God. Sometimes you, there are many of us right from our mothers, right from before we came into the earth, God had consecrated us to himself. Samson consecration was in the Nazarite taken by individuals who voluntarily dedicated themselves to God. He was dedicated to God from birth. Now, Nazarite anointings can be done by an individual choosing to do it. In Samson's case, his mother chose to give him to God. And he was dedicated to God from his birth and was the only judge. Now, listen at this. This is very important, soldiers. When I studied this part right here, it blew my mind. I want you to catch something in this sentence. He was dedicated to God from his birth. And he was the only 
church in Israel who never rallied the people or an army. Stop right there. Put a pin on that. Think about what I'm saying here. He was the only judge in Israel that never rallied the people. He never gathered the people of God towards God or God's mission. Every battle Samson had was always triggered by something his lust caused. Can't hear you. Can't hear you. I'm going to say it one more time. Everybody, Samson never rallied in on them. Even Deborah in the book of Judges rallied an army. Come on, bro. Rallied an army, but not Samson. Why? Because Samson had all of that physical strength. He really, he lived through his anointing. And listen to me. That anointing in Samson's life carried with it something called charisma. Charisma is a gifting that draws people to a grace that's in you. It ain't you. It's the gift that God has in you. And that charisma, I've seen it many times. Mm, Lord, I'll get ready to say something here. Let me say it and say it, and, 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 and say it as a wise elder, as a wise elder. I have seen some pretty little ministries. I'm not talking about women. I'm talking about men and women. I see some cute little stuff running around here. They have charisma, but they don't have character. They can, they're drawing people by their sweet and fancy words. But in reality, they have no consecration. But yet they're having visions, but no consecration. I Years ago, I dealt with a prophet. That prophet could read you like a I'm telling you, y'all, that brother could read you like a book. And if you're not careful, he will sleep with you as well if you were a good-looking woman. And the women were mesmerized by him because they saw the charisma in him. But what happened was they didn't realize that that prophet was very dangerous because he was called by God, got a gift from God, and ceased to be consecrated. Are y'all hearing me? Cease to be consecrated. Let me move on. Amen. The Nazarite vow. The vow of the Nazarite was a voluntary, voluntarily made by those who desire to separate themselves under God for a determined season. All the days of his separation, he is fully unto the Lord. During the time of his separation, the Nazarite was bound by three absolute restrictions. The Nazarite was bound by three absolute restrictions. One, First, he should eat nothing made of the vine tree, from the turtles even to the husks. One. Two, they were never shall a razor come upon his head until the days, till his days be fulfilled. Samson. Third, during the days of his separation, he shall not come, no, they shall not come, let me read right. During the days of his separation, he shall come, shall not come at the dead. In other words, he's not to be handled. Excuse me, got my writing messed up there. But let's look at Samuel, uh, at Samson here. Samson's birth was revealed through a supernatural visitation of an angel. God telling, telling his son who would be, who would be, have power and faith. But the angel of the Lord, verse 13 and 21, Judges 13, 21. But the angel of the Lord did no more appear to Manoah and to his wife. Then Manoah knew that he was an angel of the Lord. And Manoah said unto the wife, shall we surely die because we have seen God? But his wife said unto him, if the Lord were pleased to kill us, he would have received a burnt offering, wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't have received a burnt offering and meat offering at our hands. Neither would he show us all these things, nor would he would as at this time have told us such things. So they realized that they had an anointing sign, one that was to be consecrated. The majority of Samson's battles that he fought were about himself and his choices. Now I'm getting back in line. The majority of the battles that Samson had was about his choices. This place of integrity, this place of consecration, 
is also hooked directly to the choices you make. Our choices can hinder our destiny. Had Samson not chose to be self-willed, he would have he would have finished his course. Don't you even think that Samson finished his course? No, he did not. Samson did not finish his course. He died prematurely, blinded on the journey, never rounded an army because he did not deal with his stuff. When I say in number two, he was very self-willed, although mighty in battle. His father said to him in the early years of his life, when Samson said, I want a wife, his father said, what? Say, ain't there none among your own people? And Samson said, nope, I want the Philistine. Get her for me. She please me well. Self-will. Be careful of being stubborn and self-will. Remember I got me? Be very careful of being stubborn and self-will. It will kill the anointing. It will make you make mistakes. I learned from him. You can be so filled with your own lust and desire. You can't tell the anointing has left you. How many of y'all remember that about Samson? When Delilah had Samson, had his head in her lap. She asked her more than one time. Where do your strength lie? Hear me what I'm saying to you. People of God, hear me real good. These spirits have people that will go try to find where your strength lies. They will connect with you. They will hook up with you. They will seduce you. They will sweet talk you trying to find out where your strength lies. And why they want to do that? Because they're agents of the enemy set to find a way to break you. Some of this has happened to us in marriages. Some of this has happened to us with connection to ministry. Some of this has happened to us in businesses, opportunities. Do you know that I found one of the most hardest spots to be in is when you become successful now trying to find out who and what to deal with because a lot of things come your way. Samson had a lot coming his way. But his main thing, if he would have dealt with his lust and got delivered, he would have been a beast. He would have been a beast. All y'all hear me. Listen at this wisdom key. And I love giving wisdom keys. It is not enough to have favor with God, but for you to honor favor with equal commitment to him. I'm going to say it one more time. It is not enough to have favor with God, but for you to honor favor with equal commitment to him. I know you got the favor of God, but are you equally committed to him? Because sometimes we rejoice. Favor with God is his blessings given to you. And commitment is your sacrifice to God, honoring his faith. I'm going to say it one more time. Favor with God is his blessing given to you. And commitment is your sacrifice to God, honoring his favor. Let me tell y'all something. This that I'm talking about right now. Many times in my walk, I've had to go back here. Many times in my failures and in my success, I've had to go back here. Are you hearing me? I had to go back. I, Michelle, Pro Prophetess Michelle, I call this the childlike faith. The childlike faith don't make any excuses for your nasty attitude. The childlike faith does not make it. it it's called something wrong. It says I messed up. The childlike faith says, I can't keep doing this. And yes, serving God is not quit behave, stop and don't. It? But the things that get us, get us messed up usually come in that category, don't it? Look at Seth. Now here goes another guy and then we're going to take some questions. Is everybody following me here so far? Excellent. Solomon's consecration to God required. God had appeared to Solomon in a dream during the early days of his reign. And somebody said the word early days. But it's the early days you need to remember. Are you hearing me? It's the early days that helps you line up. Are you hearing me? I remember one worldwide ministry that God gave them a consecrated, uh, a consecrated place. And I said when I met them, and I met that this ministry. I'm not going to name names because it's nothing. That, this kind of talk is not something that put down anybody. But when I met this great teacher, 
I looked at them and, and, I, and the Holy Spirit said to me, as long as that person keeps this in, my, in their life of their consecration, they will be able to last the journey. But, but if you ever lose it, if you ever lose it, when you lose that place of intimacy with God, honey, you can still operate a gift, but it will have a dual flow in it, meaning gifted and contaminated. The Lord told Solomon he could have whatever he desired because he truly worshiped and honored God as his father instructed him. I'm going to go on past the reading because most of y'all um, know this. Solomon's request was not about himself, but the people of God. The man with the greatest wisdom in the world, this was his beginning. Lord, help me to discern between good and bad. Lord, give me wisdom to judge this by great people. Do y'all see it ain't nothing about himself in that? It ain't about him. It ain't about how anointed he is. It ain't about anything. He, that's what Samson told God he wanted. Let me roll up a little bit further. And we'll go. Three unselfish desires to, to rule as God's servant. One, he not asked for anything. He didn't even ask for long life. Not ask for myself for long life. God said, you could have asked, you didn't even ask me for long life. Neither has thou asked me for riches for myself, but yet God blessed him. Nor has thou asked the life of thine enemy, but yet God blessed Solomon. What am I trying to say here, my dear friend? We need to remember, and I'm getting ready to open up for questions. In order to walk in this place of character, of integrity, you emerging leaders, in order to walk in it, I will leave you with this. Let it ring inside your spirit. I must stay in that place of consecration. I must deal with what's inside of me that I know is there. If I am a person that can a hot temper, deal with it. If I am a person that can be prideful and arrogant, deal with it. Come on, people now. If I am a person that I had a life that kept falling into sins of the flesh, deal with it, friend. Because that's the one that's coming at you. And it's not that without a man that defiles him, but it's that is which is within. Listen here, Colossians 3 and 23 and 24, and then prophetess, I want to turn it in your hands to ask some questions and whatever. Whatever you do, work heartily as unto the Lord, not for men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive their inheritance as your reward, or serving the Lord Christ. In other words, whatsoever you do in word and deed, do it all as unto the Lord. Got that? Next thing. Therefore, 1 Corinthians 15 and 58, therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast and movable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. Got that? And this one here is a powerful one. Always remember, no one can serve two masters. No one can serve two masters, for he will either, either hate the one and love the others. Let me say this to y'all. About a few weeks ago, of course, if you went to Ivory Hopkins YouTube, I did a message a few weeks ago, and let me tell you what that message was about. It was about the young prophet that God had told to go give a message, and when you give the message, leave, do not stay in the room. And an old prophet got him to go and stay, had a meal with him, and he died. Now, what is the moral of that story? Don't you let no preacher, nobody sidetrack you from what God have called you to do. Now we want to take time for some questions, woman of God, in your hands. Amen. Don't you let nobody sidetrack you. Y'all heard of? Don't get sidetracked. Um, amen. This is so good. Um, before I open up for questions, please make sure you write your questions down so we can just shoot them out. Um, but I have one question. We're about to go into uh, where we actually end the deliverance portion of um, this discipleship um, group. Can you share with us, Apostle, the importance of integrity as the deliverance minister? Why is integrity important when ministering deliverance? 
Integrity is very important in ministering deliverance is because it, it speaks loudly to brother, you can be trusted. You're handling my life. And listen, I'm coming up, I'm coming up to you for ministry with my wounds. I'm coming up to you for ministry needing help. And you, and I'm looking for you to handle me properly. Mm -hmm. Listen, here goes the gracious thing of God. And we have to understand this. For a person to want you to minister deliverance on you, on them, that is the hand of God. The Holy Spirit brought them to that place. What an honor. But how you handle and how you carry yourself makes the difference. Did you know that for a while the disciples was casting out demons and doing the work of the gospel, but yet they were still self-important? They was arguing about who would be the greatest among them. They Listen, integrity helps you to be able to step aside when your minister delivers as a team when you know the anointing has lifted and he's on the next person. In our, right now, we're getting ready in, in June, uh, the 29th and 30th. We're, de we're doing a deliverance conference and people will be coming from all over the place for deliverance. The people at my church have been trained two on two. So we'll have two people on one person. You, you have to have enough integrity to realize, I don't care how many years you've been in deliverance. Let me put it to you like this. Prophetess, if you and I was on a team doing deliverance and I'm ministering, and, I, and you would say, well, Pastor, I'm, you know, you, Pastor, you general, you're going to take the lead. I know that's what you do. But let me tell you something, sister. If the Holy Spirit said, back off because I'm speaking to her, I would do it. Mm -hmm. It speaks a lot to your integrity if you can humble down and not try to be a showboat. Right. Sometimes, I don't know about y'all, but sometimes people act like deliverance is the time to be a showboat or self-important. Remember, disciples were so so jacked up, they saw somebody casting out devils, and that person wasn't a part of their group, and they go tell Jesus, hey, hey sir, and you know me, watch this, you know me, I'm check this out. The disciples go to Jesus, says, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name. Now, and Emily, what was the missing link? They didn't give a flute. <laughs> they didn't give a flute. Brother, the person was getting free. All they cared about was they followed not us. There's a lot of people out there so here in this world who don't care about the person getting help. They just care about what style or what name ministry is doing the work. Integrity in your life will allow you to become humble enough to let God use who he's using. And listen, I have an anointed common sense word that I use often. Want to hear it, Naomi? I don't know. I don't know. Right. I've never dealt with that before. The Lord showed you that, Providence? Come on, let's get together. Let's go after it. Mm -hmm. Integrity makes you not be pooty. You don't have to be phony. Sometimes in my counseling sessions, I say to people, I say, here go what we're not going to do. When God starts speaking, so do I. We're not going to pretend I discern something in you. Are you hearing me? I'm going to tell you all something. Hope you tell everybody. Many times I have people coming to me, telling me, so-and-so said I got this. So-and-so said I got that name. My big question is, if they could see what you have, why can't they deal with it? Mm -hmm. Sometimes the reason why they're not dealing with it is because they're throwing shade of being more spiritual than the revelation that they have. Mm -hmm. I said it. Amen. Integrity lies in areas like that. Mm -hmm. Integrity lies on how you handle and deal with people. Integrity lies on whether you could back up and let God use and do what he wants, the one he wants. King David, King Saul, King Saul could not beat Goliath, but he was sure quick to put his armor on, on somebody else. Come on. And then when David slays Goliath, he's mad over a song. Mm -hmm. You be that insecure. He wasn't too insecure. They say, here, take my shield and stuff, young man. But yet when the victory was won, 
Listen, have the integrity not to get jealous on whom God is using. Because that's all it is. You're just being used. You know what that reminds me of, guys? Y'all gonna like this. Y'all gonna like this. Do you know what life reminds me of? Postman. Every now and then at my house, they have a postman, post guy, post person. Guess what? Okay. I want my mail. I want to make sure it's delivered. Right. That's the way this thing works. God will choose whomever and whatever method he does. It takes integrity to recognize that. Next question. Amen. Um, I see Deja's hand and then Emily, take you. We're gonna take you right after. Go ahead, Deja, come off mute. Hello. Bless you, Deja. My question is almost like a I mean, I, I kind of feel like I know, but I'm going to ask anyway. Do you ever really like know when you're, is there a time where you're ready to start deliverance or is it one of those things where, of course, it's discerning, but should we basically put position ourselves, of course, in a secret place to learn, but should we position ourselves where we're saying, okay, God, I'm available for you to use so uh, one, one of the things I, I'll, I'll often quote this, and if I remember the verse correctly, hey, Prophet Kathy, I love you. If I remember uh, correctly, uh, I think it's Philippians 2 and 13. And if I'm mistaken, you have to bear with me. It's God that worketh in you, both the will and the do of his good pleasure. God will stir in you a desire for deliverance. God will also direct you on the timing to be involved. The preparation that you need is your life that is dedicated to God, is the work that you put in studying, praying, reading, and learning. To, mo to me, just about 80% of the people that I see in warfare are thrown in. <laughs> in yeah. other words, you, 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 you know, all of a sudden you feel this passion for it. And what have you? And listen, I was the guy, Deja. I was the guy who used to hold the people's legs so they wouldn't flap around too much. I sure graduated, didn't I? <laughs> I remember we had an evangelist from Baltimore, Maryland. Once a year, when that when that evangelist or prophetess would come, that that anointing would tear the house up. Now I'm old school. Now this is old Pen old Pentecostal church, and I remember getting down there. This demon was growling. One of my other minister, young minister friends of mine, he was looking down at me. He said, like, man, I don't know what we're fooling with them demons. I told him, I like it. And he said to me, Aubrey, what in the world would you want to fool with some mess like that? I like that. I like seeing the freedom. All of a sudden, when I would open the Bible, the scriptures would talk about freedom, liberty, break freedom. Come on now. And so God put that passion in me. And then one day, are you ready for this? There was a 16-year-old kid on the floor of the church, demonized, and the Holy Spirit said, go down there and cast it out. The missionaries was going at it. Now, if y'all know about them old missionaries, they were bad. Any time they dressed long as could be, but they was on, they was on. And I, I, was, I was a little minister Hopkins. I remember I was sitting in the pulpit with Bishop. The Holy Ghost said, go down there and tell that thing to go. Listen to this, Prophet Michelle. I walked off the pulpit, leaned down beside that demon, and the thing turned around in a deep male voice in a 16-year-old kid and said, oh, how we hate you. My eyes got about 50. I looked like a deer in headlight. But in some of me, that Wednesday, God has spoke to me, take stubborn faith and authority against the enemy. My, listen, I have, I was surprised, and then all of a sudden, I was on. Are you hearing me? That demon said, we know who you are. And I was like, wait, what? And I said, in the name, and when I said in the name of Jesus, the missionaries were anointed, of no doubt. I was not, what the matter, I was more powerful than them. Stop it. It was just my grace to be in that place to get her done. 
that demon, when I raised my hands and went at that thing, it was streaming and begging me to leave it alone. The whole church looked at me like, what just happened? All of a sudden, that which was coming to me in sleep, that which was coming to me in sleep, that which was coming to me in my emotions. In other words, I would dream about freedom. I would read about freedom. I started getting crazy books. Pigs in the Hall by Frank Hammond, which everybody thought that book was just off the chart, man, meaning they didn't accept it, okay? I started reading, all, I, I mean, I started reading material after material, and God tells me Wednesday, take stubborn faith against your own enemy. Sunday, he shows me what enemy. And I've been busting devils ever since. So days you're often thrown into it. The preparation is the lifestyle you live in righteousness, the learning that you do, learn, read. And I'm going to tell you something. Let's say you're studying rejection. You're, you read every Bible's book you can on the spirit of rejection. Tasia, do you know that God will use you in a way to break a yoke of rejection? That he oh. That's the way it works. That's the way it works. It isn't just A, B, C, D. Not quite like that. So all you got to do is just be, Lord, I'm available to you. And he will use you. Next Amen. Point. Go ahead, Ron. I mean, go ahead, Emily. Come off mute. Hello, Fafa Hopkins. Hey, Emily. Um, my question is, how do we honor um, the Lord and what it is that he called us to consecrate? So in having consecration. So, for example, um, if somebody says that their consecration is like they can't be around the spirit of lust, like because they might have been delivered from the spirit of lust. So they know that they can be around anything lustful. They can watch TV shows or anything, be around clubs or stuff. But they feel like their ministry is called to sex workers. So it's like, how do you still honor what you're supposed to be consecrated in and not be around, but you feel like you're called to that ministry? That there will be a period of time if the they're listening to what I'm saying, and we're talking about the order of things, and God never puts on us more than what we're able to fulfill. Got that? And yes, I will tell you this. Many times, I've seen this thousands of times. People that came out of certain industries or people that have gone through molestation, rape and all that. As they start to grow in God, as they get stronger in the Lord, their misery becomes a part of their ministry. Now, that being said, that does not mean that that person is going to go run around and pop on porn to see if they can get some tactical warfare. That, that, uh, is everybody, yeah, I said it. Yeah, I said it. So what I'm saying to you, baby girl, is that the Lord brings us out of a thing. And yes, you have to use wisdom. Just like I, I came out of heavy drug addiction, heavy drug addiction. For a while, baby girl, I could not even go in the town where, where it was. When I would go on them streets, I would feel a pool inside of me. As I, after I, as time went by, I now pull the streets. Amen. And, are you hearing me, what I'm saying to you? So there is a season. Now, you always have to use wisdom. Look, if you can tell uh, when you are feeding off of something, mm -hmm, you can tell when you're feeding off of it. What do I mean? Let's say God brought you out of lust for a particular type of body part. Now, someone's coming up saying, well, I've been dealing with lust like this and that and that is the case. And, uh, and let me tell you something. I teach all of our deliverance workers, if you have someone come up and you feel a pull on your flesh or a, or you seem like I'm not able to engage this thing, back up, switch over and let the other worker deal with it because you're not free enough to want to engage that. Does everybody understand me? Now, I know somebody cute out there. I can do all things through Christ. No, you cannot do anything any way you want to. So there will be times. We're talking about common sense. And do you all do know, Brother Ivory believes the Holy Ghost and common sense can dwell in the same head. Okay? If there is a certain time where you're ministering to someone 
and they have the same spirit that you have been battling with and you're still not completely fully free, switch hitters. It's nothing wrong with that. That's simply called wisdom. By the way, I'll tell y'all a funny little years ago, I was in a deliverance and I was casting this demon at this person and the demon turned around and said, I don't know why you casting me out. You used to do the same thing. And when that demon did that, he thought, I'm going to go in embarrassment. You know what I said? Okay, now I'm casting you out and proceeded what I had to do. How many of y'all, don't have to show your hands, how many of y'all have ever had to deliver somebody from your same stuff? Amen. Hey, that's all a part of it. But to your question earlier, the Holy Spirit will tell you that certain things you stay away from, certain places you can't go, certain things you can't get involved with. Follow me? And also the Holy Ghost will be able to tell you you're able to pray for this person because you're in that place. That's what I'm saying. Amen. I hope I can work your question. I hope it helps. Amen. It helps, Emily. Thumbs up. Or do I need to clarify something else, Emily? Did it no, help? that was amazing. That was real, real good. Thank you so much, Pastor. Mm -hmm. Veronica, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Apostle Hopkins. And um, Emily, that was actually a really great question. So that helped me out yes. as well. Um, and I think it kind of goes with the question that I have. When we're speaking of integrity, uh, Apostle Hopkins, I really appreciate how you brought that up that um, while others may have a sip or a drink or a glass of wine or something else, right? You know that that's not something that you will entertain. Right. Um, so what are some questions? And I know at the beginning you asked you asked us a certain question um, of how to um, identify and have those things set so that we know, like, for example, that's one that's one for me. I don't care who's drinking around me. Uh, not a not an ounce of, of alcohol is is coming into my body because I know that I've been God has set me free from that but I'm wise enough as well I'm going to use wisdom and not be foolish to say oh I can have a glass because I or I can have a drink or a sip because I know that that one sip one drink leads to another and another and another until drugs and alcohol and it's a full blown um addiction mm -hmm. um so can you talk a little bit more about what are some other questions we can use to really hone in on those things that God is se separating us apart from and to consecrate. Hey, I, will, I, will, I will use, uh, I think it's Ephesians 4 and 27, if I'm not mistaken. It says, neither give place to the devil. That word place is topaz, and it means license, opening, door, or opportunity. License, mm -hmm. opening, door or opportunity neither give place to the devil so pause. so now that being said when you look at your life many times you can tell the if you can remember what god saved you from eh? and what i'm talking about is let's I, i'll start with the biggest and easiest one repeated cycle repetitious cycle Cycles where you keep getting hooked up with the same situation. For you, that's the strong man in your life. It could be a strong man in the family line. I give a case in point. Uh, sister called me from England and she said to me, Apostle Hopkins, I need prayer. I need deliverance to break a generational stronghold in my family line. She says, my grandmother, my mother, myself, and many of the women in our family, they drive men away. I'm going like, okay. She said, let me explain to you. She said, my fiance sometimes would be sitting looking at football over the house doing nothing wrong, just looking at television. She said, sometimes I look at him and something inside me goes, just look at him. Sitting there, stupid, look at him. And she said, I'm going on it, just bugging. She said, I've had times where this man would be doing nothing. And he said, you know what? I'm going home because I just can't take this. She said, 
apostle, I need prayer because I keep driving him away. My mother drove my dad away. My grandmother drove, uh, uh-huh. drove my grandfather away. When I went to praying with her, she had a demon in her. That wow. thing would drive a man away. Wow. I, literally. I was dealing with a Latino sister who had a spirit in her that liked to fight and then have sex. She did it in the world. Gave her life to the Lord. Married a man of God. And she still had this thing where she would want to fight, start the argument, and then make love and make up. And mm-hmm. guess what? By the way, it was one of my famous words. Not always the case. I'm going to say it one more time. Not always the case. She was from Long Island, New York. I'll never forget this long as I live. When we went to ministry deliverance in her, there was a perverted spirit in her that got off on fight, fuss, and then the other. Got it? And God delivered her. So sometimes you can tell a stronghold in your life by the oddity that you feel operating, what it does to your life, and how it wrecks havoc in your life. When addictions are very easy, addictions are very easy to find. Now, another one that can be very, very hard, uh, a spirit of perfectionism. Wherein you think that you have excellence, but in reality, you have a perfectionist spirit that drives everyone crazy that has to work with you. That can be there. That can be Leviathan, a spirit of pride, real arrogance. So, so some of this stuff is from the ugly to the acceptable. There are certain strongholds in this world that are acceptable. So I hope I gave gave some of them to you. And y'all are going, let me tell you something. You and your deliverance work, y'all are going to meet people that get hit with a lot of packages that comes from the kind of home environment they were brought up in. That, and that's another stronghold you'll come in. When you see such as, uh, let me give a good example, self-sabotage when it comes to finances and money. Oh. Then you see that connected to fear and insecurity. Or using things to make you feel emotionally secure. That can be a stronghold. And casting the demon out alone doesn't stop it. The devil is what puts the push on it. Correction and then crucifixion and then setting your life in order. That's what closes the door. What we do in what we call counseling and deliverance. And I'm going to say this because I get a lot of people being very arrogant when they say this. You can't counsel a demon out. What idiot that been in deliverance for 45 years thinks all of a sudden today, I can counsel a demon out of a person. What I can do with counseling is listen to you, listen to the Holy Spirit, and find the root cause of that demonic struggle. Find out why is it every Sunday they go back and that thing is still wobbling. Why? If you keep getting delivered from the same thing over and over again, Either or, you may have not gotten down to the root cause that it's making it come in, or you're dealing with a nest of spirits that are connected to it, or you very well may not be discerning the correct demon. And the person could very well not understand what it means to shut that door. And it's important in deliverance to have people to learn how to shut a door. I tell a person, and I'm going to give you all something that I hope you stick, to stick with you. Whatever you deliver a person from, please try to convince them to go in the Bible, get deliverance books or whatever on that subject. Most mm-hmm. people think, jump in the prayer line is done. Now, I know somebody goes, well, what book do you think the Galilean has? The Bible doesn't speak to that. Mm-hmm. We can be all smart and cute all we want to. Ignorance is not bliss. The Bible said my people are destroyed because of a lack of knowledge. My people have gone into captivity. Because they have no knowledge. So everybody you deliver, tell them or try to help them get material or scriptures speaking into what they get delivered from. Most of the time, almost almost 80% of the people that I counsel, if I have to come through deliverance, I actually give them a book related to the subject that I've dealt with, that I'm dealing with, so that they can learn more. Because most people, 
It's back again. If it's back again, then why? So it's always good for them to get material. None of us deliverance ministers want to have people keep coming back to us. Not because we don't love you, but because we want you to move on to maturity. Got it? There we go. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Um, go ahead, Crystal. And then we'll take one more after Crystal. This is fun, y'all. I love it. Good afternoon. Um, hi, Apostle Bailey. Hello. I mean, I'm Hopkins. Sorry, Hopkins. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It's on here. <laughs> It's my buddy, Apostle Kevin Bailey. You know, <laughs> I love him. We've been me and him go way back, way back. Tag that team. Praise <laughs> deliverance for me. Thank you. Not ashamed of it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, Apostle, um, this is the question that I have. You pretty much kind of answered it with the previous uh, answer that you just gave when you saying, because um, my question was, how do you stop selling for the same thing? And you pretty much answered it because um, it's you know like going back in the in the same uh, being around the same people um, things like that like um, so for instance like you just said about the like um, say you get delivered and every you're delivered and everything right and 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 you get delivered from whatever you're delivered from the things that you're saying you need delivered from but yet you go back into old habits and stuff like that like with the familiar spirit like how do you can you help me? I can't even finish the question. <laughs> Crystal, stop going back? You, might, you might feel like you kind of tongue tied to with what you're trying to say, but mm-hmm. you're not. I mm-hmm. heard you. I heard you. Let me say something to you. There, there is a, uh, I've seen this happen many times. People get delivered from a certain stronghold connected with a social area, certain people, certain things in their surrounding. And they keep falling back into it. You know why? Because they don't want to displease somebody. Because they, this is why any person training you would train you how to put a boundary up to something that deals with interaction with people. That's why the Bible said, come out from among them and be you separate. And I will be your God and you will be my people. That verse right there is also needed and used when it comes to being a people pleaser. Earlier this morning, earlier this morning on my uh, Facebook page, I'm going to my other computer, checking some. I did a message this morning. Yeah, just bear with me, uh, saints. And what I talked about this morning, it was a very powerful message. And the principle in it was a deliverance principle. And here goes was the name of the message. Two conversations that will go nowhere. Knowing when you say, knowing when what you say changes nothing. Now, why did I teach that? That message is about setting boundaries with certain folks in your life that no matter what you say, they're not changing. They're, they, they're going to treat you the same way. Do you really think your rejector is going to stop rejecting you? Because you got to live. Wow. Look what it says about Jesus. He was despised and rejected, a man of soul, and according to we breathe, all of that. How come Jesus didn't suffer from the spirit of rejection? Because Jesus did not commit himself to the rejectors. Jesus did not. There comes a time and place that I want my deliverance and freedom. Let's say I, I was a black sheep in my family. Well, check this out. I'm getting my deliverance and finding out who I am with God and holding my freedom. But here goes what I'm not going to do. I'm not going to look for their permission, their accolades to validate my freedom because they're the ones that got me bound up. And I ain't got to hate them. When people show you really who they really are, believe them the first time. So some of our deliverance is not just getting demons cast out, but it is also putting a boundary up, even in your expectations. I absolutely have some people in my life, even in the internet world, that I don't expect you to like me. I don't expect you to, to believe in what I'm doing. Not looking for you to give any, none of it. Well, Hawkins, how do you do that? I learned how to do that when I had to deal with the fact that there's a part of me that likes everybody. There's a part of me that I want to please everybody. And there's common sense in me that knows there are some folks that will feed off of that too. Yeah. And 
blood. You know what it is, Crystal? We don't, we would rather cry staying than cry leaving. Which one you want to do? But sometimes you have to put up a boundary. And when I say put up a boundary, do we have a second, Michelle? Yes, we do, Apostle. Listen, I always use this fictitious person in the band. Her name is Aunt Agnes. Now, if anybody's named Agnes, I'm not talking about you. Now, here goes how Aunt Agnes rolls. She sees you and your brother at a picnic. Now, she and your brother goes, are you going to the family picnic? I don't know, man, because Agnes is going to be there. We said, well, and then one says, well, I'm going anyway. So here goes Aunt Agnes, what you see. How you doing, Crystal? I'm all right, Aunt Agnes. <laughs> Well, girl, you look you look pretty good. You ain't pregnant by some man, are you? <laughs> and you go, no, Aunt Agnes, I'm not. Uh, and, and young man, I'm surprised to see you. I was wondering whether you'd end up in jail or whatever. Right now, how you doing, boy? Now, Aunt Agnes is ignorant. <laughs> she almost makes you want to, you know, lose your salvation, but don't. Now, here goes the deal. You know the reason why you were able to, y'all both were able to go to the picnic? And go on and eat some food and enjoy yourself. Because you got you got delivered to the point until Aunt Agnes is acting just the way she does. But here's what happened. The power of her influence is not only. Listen at this Bible verse. And it's talking about the Jews receiving Jesus and did not receive Jesus as Lord. And the ones who did, he gave them power to be called the sons of God. St. John chapter 1, verse 11. And this is nothing. Anti-Semitic. Let me say that for the algorithm. This is nothing anti-Semitic. But in St. John 11, there's a wisdom here. Listen at this, Shabbat. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them he gave power to be called the sons of God. Veronica, in his context, is talking about salvation to those who accept him. But listen at the wisdom key in it. For as many as received him, that's who he gave power to. Now, I got a question for all of you soldiers. Are you going to keep giving power to those who reject you? Matter of fact, I'm going to tell you something that, that I like about knowing what a person feels about me. I then know how to engage them. It's the ones who hide. That's the problem. But the ones who go through that stuff, Thank you very much. I really appreciate the fact that you let me know your stronghold coming at me. So stop giving power to him. Set a boundary. But Brother Aubrey, I just don't want to be mad. You don't have that. You, you, listen, you're either going to get your freedom or comply to their bondage. You can't have both. You, and guess what? All of you out there, how many of y'all like, old enough to realize you can't, you can't say about people? How many know that? Or are you still trying? Not even God Almighty can say the five folk. So you just will come to bed. But it hurts to be like that. Ain't it a shame? Now, go on and lace up your boots. Come on. And let's get into war because that's the way it is. They're going to reject you. And the only remedy for that rejection is you to stop seeking their approval. Amen. 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 For as many as receive me, that's who I give power to, to become whatever in my life. If you don't receive me, if you can't, if you can't handle what God has made me, I will not accommodate you by trying to be something else you want me to be. Come on. Amen. And listen, Amen. To that. I, okay. listen, there are people out there that I can't minister to. I don't yeah. like him. I don't, I don't go that deep. And guess what? For you, for the ones who can receive me, I'm quite busy. <laughs> That's not fair. <laughs> Amen. So, um, I I don't see any more hands. Um, if you have, oh, you had a raise your viral hand. We're gonna take one more because I don't, you don't want to keep. Uh, uh, this is discipleship, so you know they're going to have a lot of questions, Apostle. Mm -hmm. But we're going to take one more. Uh, Naomi, you can raise your hand. And then I do want to open it up just a little bit for Apostle 
um, Bailey and Kathy to give some rem Prophet Kathy to give some remarks. Go ahead, um, Naomi. Ask Apostle Hopkins a question. Um, thank you so much for this powerful teaching, my God. Um, so for for us that are intercessors, um, how can we pray? Um, what are some prayer points that we can pray for our church that is not yet there or not operating in um, deliverance? Yeah, that, that is wonderful. And, and, and you know, I, I just not too long ago did some teaching on intercession. Y'all are birthers. So y'all, y'all, to pray for them. Remember, we could have good ministries that have not embraced certain areas of ministry. That's just the way it is. It happens. And it doesn't mean believe. No, listen, if someone told me that uh, our church does all the other parts of the gospel, but they're not doing deliverance, so I'm leaving, I would go like, why? Why leave? If God isn't telling you to go anywhere, just stay, be still. Matter of fact, an intercessor, y'all pray for God to open up the understanding. Pray for God to open doors, you know. The other day I did a teaching talking about the need of ministries embracing deliverance, and many are. So intercede for y'all's ministry and what have you, and pray for that door to open. Pray for God to make a way and what have you, and then also trust God that he will. And intercessors, I will say this to you too. I always tell intercessors, because you are one that can feel the spiritual climate often before most of the church does, don't let what you see as a watchman Cause you to run because you saw it. Because oh, part of a watchman's uh, a watchman's job is to see. Now I'm going to tell you one of the greatest blessings that a, a, a seer in my church did. Our uh, intercessor. I got knocked down bad. I mean, it was the worst fall that I ever had. Listen to what this intercessor said to me. She said, "Apostle," she said, "The Lord showed me you in a vision." She said there was a golden field of wheat. And she said it was everywhere, Apostle. She said, and you had your hands and you were just rolling your hands through the wheat, through the wheat. The wheat was the souls, the wheats were the lives. And she said, and in the second heaven, a voice said, he's alone. Attack him now. Mm. And I got hit. And, and I mean, hit hard. I went into a depression. It was the worst thing I went through. But guess what I was feeling when I got here? I felt so alone. I felt like uh, I, every, everyone was that I was ministering to was getting blessed, but I wasn't. Mm -hmm. I felt so empty. The ministry no longer ministered to me. Matter of fact, I would recommend a book of mine. It's called Who Counsels the Counselor? Who Ministers to You After You Have Ministered to Everyone Else? So intercessor, don't, don't ever look at the grace of the point leaders or the people you're around and count yourself unable to discern the need they need. Got that? The Holy Spirit with an intercessor can actually show you the need that we need. That's why you're there. Are you hearing me? So some of the points I would give you is not to run, not to jump, jump ship. I, I told to some intercessors and they go like, well, Apostle, I think, do you think it's time for me to leave? Because I'm seeing so many things in the ministry. I said, well, who told you to go? God, well, then did he tell you to leave? No. Then be still, soldier. Because <laughs> that's what intercessors do. They see, they feel, they discern. That's what intercessors do. So be there available. Be on point. All right. God bless you. I hope that helped, darling. Amen. Amen. So thank you so much, Apostle. Um, I put his cash app in there, please. If he's blessed you, um, please sow into um, his ministry. His cash app is General Ivory Hopkins. Um, General Ivory Hopkins. If Prophet Kathy and Apostle Billy can raise your hand so y'all can move up to the top. And y'all can give some closing remarks. And then I just want to ask Apostle um, Hopkins if he can pray us out. After yes. Prophet Kathy go. So These are my people. Come on up, y'all. <laughs> uh, turn on your mic, Prophet Kathy. How you doing, sweetie? Oh, well, I won't be long because I actually don't have a mic. 
Love you. Uh, I love you too, Apostle. Uh, as you were talking today, ooh, I could remember some of the stories, some of our East Coast deliverance. Yes, you know, my I thought, I, look, I thought the West Coast had some demons. Is that East Coast beast? <laughs> but one of the things that I, I really appreciate, because even though I've been in working with you and you, we know we uh, co-labors together, I always learn something fresh. So all of you, you know some best, but always get refreshed because there's more than you can learn. That, and it'll help you get your rest so you don't have to stress. That's one thing. Rest is important for deliverance workers. Uh, you talked about the consecrated life, a fasting life, a prayer life. But I wanted to ask you, you know, a lot of times, and this has happened, uh, deliverance, people walk up for deliver deliverance and they have a list of all the demons they think they got. I mean, a list. And they want this, this, and this. How do you, I know how you taught us. You pray and ask God what's on that list. And sometimes what he showed you isn't on the list. And then mm -hmm. you got to deal with them manifesting. But is that, you know, is that something, you know, that you have to holler and scream and because I want to share a story real quick as, before you answer that. I was in with um, in Delaware at the conference and I'm going to say his name, Apostle Thurman and I, we were a team. And we were working with this lady and she was talking and we were getting nowhere. I don't know if you remember this. And we kind of counseled together. Because she was draining us. That demon was draining us. And I said, I think this is one. I'm not sure why we can't get through. So yeah. Apostle Herman went and Thurman went and got you. And when Apostle walked in, that lady hollered. I've been waiting for you. We looked at each other. I said, pray the Lord, hand of the general. So you have to know what you're capable. Is that true? True. true. Okay. True. True. So if you can kind of answer that, so because you know, yeah. help them to understand, you know, stay in your lane, know what you're able to do. Remember, I loved it. You talked about teamwork. Yes. But, you know, how do you, you know, a lot of times people be hollering and screaming and come out, come out, and they ain't moving nowhere. You getting tired and losing your voice. So how do you suggest or you know help them to understand? Follow the the Holy Spirit, even if it's a list and there's only one that's not on that list. Okay. Now, I, this is a, a, a prophet, Kathy, this is a perfect question. See, <clears throat> before I learned deliverance, I learned how the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit operate. I learned how to yield to hearing from the Lord. Now, what that is called was demon listing. It is called a demon group. It became well famous in the 70s and 80s when we were doing deliverance back there then. And what they would do is there would be almost like a thesaurus of demons where certain things would be in certain demonic groups. Now, here goes the thing about that is, is that sometimes people come with this long list of demons. These are the ones I want. And I go politely, thank you. For, here goes what I do a lot of times. Okay, 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 thank you. And then I set it down. And then I listen for what the Holy Spirit is telling me to deal with. Because sometimes people got what they want. This this society more than any is a society that they come to God with a shopping list. As if you can be, look, God knows exactly, specifically what he is dealing with or what he's trying to deliver you for that's in the season of your walk or maturity. So that's the way we do that. Now, sometimes those lists do have things that are, that are do work. But predominantly, if you learn really how to use, now here goes what I say. This is that this prophet, Kathy. I'm always perplexed that you are a prophet or a prophetess and you're not hearing from God when you're sitting right in front of that, that, that person. So do not allow people to pigeonhole you into what they want to, want to be free of. I just I just had an incident. Uh, 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 Apostle Kevin, you're going to love this one. 
I just made a couple with me. I mean, they were mad with me. Do you know why? Listen to this, Veronica. They were mad with me because they wanted me to do a de deliverance with them over marriage breaking spirits, but they had no accountability for how they were treating each other. Well, wait a minute, Brother Hopkins. The game is with no, no, Sister Veronica. No, no. The Bible says for us to have fruit and how a husband and wife treats it. And me and Evelyn is running around here, tussing each other out and, and acting the fool around here. And, and I'm telling you, well, I want you to never have it because she got demons. Well, he's the one with the demons. Somewhere you're missing it. You're both yielding over to like serving God and dealing with sin first. Some people want to get a devil cast out, but they don't want their ways dealt with. And many times you don't do what you do because you got a demon. You often get demons because of what you're doing. Mm. Are, are you understanding me there? So you're going to get people like that, that they want to cherry pick their deliverance. Stay in charge. And then I'm going to tell you another thing you got to be ready to do, ready for. If the Holy Spirit is not doing a deliverance, who are you? What you going to do? How come I say this and I'm going to get out of the way? Why do you think, soldier? In Acts chapter 16, the Bible says the woman came in and said, these be men of the most high God will show us the way of salvation. And the Bible said, this, this did she many days. Now, I'm sure if it had been in y'all's hot team, we would have took that out day one. I don't know why Paul was putting up with that demon. Why did it take many days? Why did he just do it? I'm going to tell you why. Paul, like Jesus, had to get a mandate from the Father. When Jesus was physically here on earth, it looked like to you that he just ran around doing what he wanted to do. But it was the Father that gave the command to make it happen. So do understand, deliverance is not something that you can have a shopping list. Mm -hmm. Or I want this done, I want that done. Because I've had people come for one thing and God turn around and deliver another. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of done. Prophet, that was a good question there, Prophet. Yes. Amen. So I'm just, I'm going to turn it over to Apostle Billy. You can give some quick remarks and then Apostle Hopkins is going to close us out in prayer. You on mute, Apostle Billy. He going to laugh at me. Look, I'm just having such a good time. I'm having so much fun uh, with this. Um, what I was saying uh, that 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 question is is powerful for Prophet Kathy. Uh, I ain't gonna take all night, but I will say this: um, the key, what General was saying, your key teammate and agent is the Holy Spirit. You have to listen to them because the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Truth. I, I know what they're saying. They they oh. they come to me and send me emails with all type of stuff. And I just, I look and I pray. And then when I connect with them, uh, it was a strong man or a whole strong cold, a vain imagination is sometimes it's not a demon. It's just their ways. So you got to be very discerning and ask the Holy Spirit to help you. That's number one. Number two, I will say that if you don't have back to one of the questions they ask, if you don't have compassion, or love people because deliverance is a compassion and it's a miracle ministry. Okay. If you don't have compassion, don't do it. You have to love people. Mm -hmm. You have to love people. If you don't love people, don't do it because you'll, you'll mess a lot of people up. They're going to need deliverance after you tip deliverance. They're going to need deliverance. If you don't have compassion, you have to leave people with dignity when you pray for them. And one of the problems we keep running into is that people get delivered. And then what they told the leaders is preached about over the pulpit. There is no confidentiality. They can't trust you. You've got to be a trusted source and a safe place for the people. And the last thing I'm going to say it's never get to the point where you believe you arrived. I've been doing deliveries. Uh, General has been learning it, doing it longer than me. And I still learning from him. He doesn't think so, but I've learned a lot from him. 
Uh, and he prays for me and he asked me to pray for him. But I'm going to tell you this. Never get to the place where you think you don't need deliverance. As long as you're in this earth, uh, deliverance will always be necessary. Now, now, everything is not a demon. Some things are brought on by decisions and lack of discipline. The Hello. decisions that you make. Remember, there are three things that you have. You have free will. Then you have a decision to make. But with every decision and free will is consequences. It could be bad or good. So don't go and say, well, uh, you, you overate and say, well, the devil made me did it. No, you just overate. You don't have a demon. You just overate. Okay, so <laughs> it's not a demon. You just overate. So sometimes we over, don't over spiritualize these things of the, the deliverance ministry and there's no superheroes sometimes you may not be able to get the demon to leave then guess what Jesus sent the disciples out two by two you let the other person work when I do counseling sessions with uh, Providence Michelle B I'll tell her pray well what are you hearing what do you see what's going on and then I'll go in with a series of questions but she might receive some prophetic said no apostle is this is that, is this, it ain't that, is this, this, and this. Mm -hmm. So you got to work within a team as well. Humble yourself. Be humble. Nobody has all the answers. As right. long as I've been doing it, guess what? I still get a napkin and cough them up. Thank you. Thank you. I still breathe them out and I'll cough if I have to or vomit them out. <laughs> and if I can't get them out, I go to general and say, help me get this out. Help me get this demon out. I know it's a demon. Help me get it out. I need help with this. Getting this demon out. So never be at a place where you think that you don't need help. Yes, self-deliverance is great. But if you don't get results, you go and get help. You go to general and get help. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Ain't no shame in the game. So play the game right. right. That's so, right. Apostle, somebody asked um, about a conference in Maryland. I think it's Delaware. You posted something, right? It's going to be in Delaware, Apostle. It's going to be at my church. Yeah. June, the uh, June the, if you're talking about the one in Delaware, June mm -hmm. the 29th and the 30th. Amen. The, the uh, 29th is a Saturday starting at 9 a.m. The uh, Sunday is 10, 10 a.m. Amen. And we will be doing deliverance those days. And there is no registration fee. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's not about money at all, man. We, we will take up an offering. If you don't have one, what am Right now, I just don't have time for that. They even be bothered about that. But that's what we're going to do. And by the way, if you're coming to that conference, hey, man, I'm only one human being. So mm -hmm. I will be I will be right up with everybody else praying and what have you. But I can't guarantee you that I can, I can pray for 100 people. Amen. That's why we're doing it as a team. And by the way, I want to say something to you guys as I'm getting ready to close out in prayer. Uh, mm -hmm. Prophet Michelle, proud of you. Amen. You're doing a good work, and I, and I'm and I'm proud of you mm -hmm. and what have you. Amen. I just want to just tell you that we've we've talked at times and what have you. I've heard the strong you, and I've heard the little girl you saying little pasta. Amen. You're doing a good work, and I I just want to tell you that. And listen to me, people. Of God, listen to my heart. Sometimes you will have people seeking you to take them to deliverance and they're angry with God. And they, they, they want you to do what them and God are wrestling with. Sometimes you're going to face that. So let me tell you something. You, you, you know, don't, I never guarantee a person anything. You won't find me on a flyer. God, I got you. You'll get delivered. No. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Uh-uh, we're going before the Father. But sometimes you will find people who will come to you for what they want done. But remember, God is in control. We used to sing that in our choir. God is in control. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you and I want to praise you and give you honor, Father God, for the work of the Lord, for the blessing of the night's teaching, the importance of one's character and integrity as emerging prophets and deliverance ministries. 
I want to ask you, Father God, to bless this fruit, Father. Now, Lord God, I ask whatever that we can add as far as wisdom and insight. Lord God, I can't ignite nothing in them that you haven't already stirred. So, Father, I ask that your grace and your anointing bring them to the full maturity and not only the ministry of deliverance, but in the fullness of kingdom work. Lord God, use them for your glory. And Father God, always remind them that the enemy always barks hard when he sees us being affected. He criticizes the most when we're most affected. He will try to come against everything you got when he knows you got more than what you recognize. So Father, let us not be weary and well doing, for we shall be rewarded in due season if we faint not. Thank you, Lord God, that our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And God, you have made us of uh, Jeremiah 5120. We are your battle axes and weapons of war. Amen and amen. God bless your soldiers. Amen. I'm just stop this.